that's what uh, struck me, you know, later. So she explained who he was, she explained their relationship, and, she, and what he had done in a nutshell. But she had a vision of a film about her father. Well, I went home and I looked up Huberman online and I was just floored at who this man was. I mean, you see who he was. And I realized that this was a man who had started the Israel Philharmonic, which was, in a sense, the seeds of the culture of Israel, as Amnon Weinstein says at the end, that uh, uh, had completely changed his life. And the arc of his life was a fascinating story, I found. And he saved a thousand Jews. He was one of the greatest musicians of the century, and he was completely unknown. That's why I made the film. Okay, so but the movie is incredibly well researched. Um, what, but beyond talking to the the daughter, one daughter, what what is your process? How do you get started with something like this that is just so sweeping and big and takes you all over Europe, the U.S.? You know, I look at the film now, and I can't even imagine how we made it. Uh, for the reasons you're saying, I mean, it's just uh, to start from scratch. If you did, if, if I knew what it was going to take to have done it, it would have been too daunting to do it. But and, but most documentary films, in a way, are have that quality about them. It's just one foot in front of another. And so I thought to tell the story, the easiest thing to do would be to read everything that had been written about Huberman. And there was no book ever written about Huberman. There is now, it's, but it's in Polish. But no book had been written about Huberman. Uh, there was an archive in Tel Aviv that we found, uh, and a number of people in, in Israel knew of Huberman. Dorit was a wonderful ally, the, the woman who brought me the story, because she was desperate that this story get out there. Uh, and she, being Israeli, she had great connections, and she knew, I mean, in Israel, and she grew up with the Israel Philharmonic, because her father was a concertmaster. So she knew everyone. So we went to Israel together, and I met a lot of people. I went to the archive. There's a Huberman archive uh, at the Felicia Blumenthal Center in Tel Aviv. And they were very responsive. Everything was completely unorganized. They have no money, so there's no cataloging system. There's, it's not on the computer. It was very difficult. All of his letters are in German or Polish. And all the articles that had been written about him, except for the ones in England or here in the United States, were, of course, in German or Polish or whatever. Uh, so I hired a, 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 you know, an intern who was bilingual and could speak German and, uh, and English. And I got her going and we would sit together and uh, it was about a year of translating letters and looking for nuggets of information. And, uh, and then we started doing the same thing in Berlin for information that we couldn't get. The Berlin Philharmonic was very helpful. Uh, they, they had great archives. Obviously their archives in Berlin were just perfect. 